Right, this is the start of the next set of five for the 2010 AMC 10A. This is problem number six. Again, on this uh, six through 10, you kind of want to average between maybe 30 seconds and a minute and a half for these questions, at least on the older tests. And again, all of this is subject to modification per year. They could throw a wrench at you and number eight could be a totally weird problem that no one's ever thought of. They, they do that a lot in recent years. The older problems become a little bit more familiar over time. You may have seen them appear in other local math competitions, the concepts that is, um, over the years since you've been in school. So here we go. For positive numbers X and Y, the operation, the original symbol they use is a, a spade from like, you know, a deck of cards spade, but I'm not gonna draw a spade up here. I don't have that artistic skill. So we're using the hashtag uh, or the number symbol, you might call it. So hashtag or number, we just call it symbol. Symbol X comma Y is defined as the symbol of X comma Y is equal to X minus one over Y. Now, if you're, if you're thinking about it, you should see this as X minus the reciprocal of Y. Why? Because it's good to think about things in different ways. It might provide some speed um, calculation ability later on. So here we go. What is the symbol of this and this? Okay, this is just, this is a very common problem type where it used to be. It's not as common anymore because it became so saturated in the math competition community. Most uh, experienced problem solvers have seen several problems like this. Uh, it may come back in the future, but I don't see it in the next few years. Maybe it does. All right, so uh, the symbol is two, two. Start here, start at the innermost part of it and do that first. Two minus the reciprocal of two. So first minus the reciprocal of the second. So two minus a half is obviously three over two. Now you're gonna have the symbol two with three over two. And again, it's the first minus the reciprocal of the second. So two minus two thirds, six thirds minus two thirds is four thirds, which is C. Okay, and now on to the 2010 AMC 10A problem seven. Crystal has a running course marked out for her daily run. She starts this run by heading north for one mile. Before reading further, you should already understand it's some kind of map diagram. You're not gonna hold the whole map diagram in your head, so just get started making it and make it as you read. So we'll start her home right here. She's gonna go north one mile. Uh, she then runs northeast for one mile. You should understand it's implied with northeast that it is 45 degrees to the horizontal, right? So that this, she's going this way. So that if you were to make a horizontal line this way, she's going at 45 degrees that way. Okay, so 45 degrees, she's gonna go that distance for one mile as well. Then southeast for one mile. Again, you have to understand southeast as going at 45 degrees here, right? So that if this is 45, you also know that these are parallel lines. This is 45, this is gonna be 90. So you're just gonna come down at 90 degrees and you'll come over to here and that will be one. The last portion of her run takes her on a straight line back to where she started. How far in miles is this last portion of her run? So it's in miles, we were in miles, we're good, we just need to calculate. Now this is obviously x, x, and x root two. If you don't know that, do Pythagorean, but shame on you if you don't know that. Uh, one and root two, do Pythagorean, root two squared is two, one squared is one, square root that, root three, that is the answer. On to the next one. All right, now we're doing the 2010 AMC 10A problem number eight. Tony works two hours a day and is paid 50 cents per hour for each full year of his age. Okay, uh, during a six month period, Tony worked, okay, so before you go on, do you think during the six month period, he's really going to stay the same age for the whole time? I mean, it's possible, right? But this is question number eight on a math competition. This is not school math. It's not gonna be that simple. You should assume and then verify that uh, he's gonna change ages. So we're gonna say A is his age at the beginning and A plus one his age at the end of the six months. So let's go back and process what we read into some kind of equations to work with. Two times 
Uh, 50 cents will rate as one half, so he gets a half a dollar per hour. So uh, two times a half, he's gonna get paid times, oh, for each full year of his age. So times A. So let's say, for example, he's 10 years old. Then 10 times a half uh, is $5. He's going to get paid two for, for each hour times two hours is $10 a day. So think about what you're writing as you write it, right? It's a little bit, you can get kind of confusing in there if you're not careful. So then uh, this is how much he makes per day at his original age. But he works for 50 days. So let's say that he worked for D days at the initial age. Well, then how many days will he work at the other age, the age where he's plus one? He's going to work 50 minus D. So we're going to add to this another still two hours. He still gets paid half times his age, but his age is now A plus one. It's increased by one. And the number of days he works at that rate is 50 minus D. All right, it might take you a little longer to come up with this. That's okay. Don't feel bad or whatever. Um, it's just, it can be difficult. We don't think in this way about the age changing and stuff like that typically. So now we go on. He earned 630. Well, this is how much he earned. And again, to review one more time, it's two hours a day times, times uh, 50 cents per year of his age. So this is how much he gets paid per hour right there times the number of hours times the number of days he worked at that rate. Okay, same thing over here. It's a little bit easier to create this one once you've created this one. That needs to equal 630. So then obviously the two and the halves are gonna cancel and you're gonna get AD plus. Go ahead and start distributing. And you might feel a slight moment of panic. I've got two unknowns and one equi- uh, Shut up, tell yourself to shut up, right? And just go on, it's gonna get better. There's gonna be some way to figure it out. You have to have faith in that. If there's no way to figure it out, then they wouldn't have made the question, right? So let's just keep going. A times 50 is 50A. A times negative D, that's gonna cancel with this. Uh, one times 50 is 50, and one times negative D is negative D equals 630. The ADs cancel out, subtract the 50 to get 580, and you get 50A um, minus D is equal to 580. Now just apply logical reasoning, right? Uh, you just think, if this was 11, if he was 11 at the start, which is one of the answers, um, if he was 11, this would only be 550, and D would have to be negative to get up there. So the first value you should kind of logically check is 12, it gives 600, and he would have worked for 20 days at that wage. So then uh, 600 minus 20 is 580, right? Now, if you try 13, let's say he was 13 at the start, then this becomes 650 and you have to subtract 70. The problem is he only worked a total of 50 days. This is impossible. So we know this is the correct setup. Now, be careful. They're starting to try to trick you. If you do this, you go, oh, I got the answer. I solved my equation. You're so happy and you're so excited. A is 12 and you put 12 and you get it wrong. Right? It happened to several kids that year, several students that were taking the test. So don't do that. Think a little bit. We're going a little fast. Slow down just a little bit and make sure it makes sense. So it asks for at the end of the six month period. This is his age at the beginning. This is his age at the end. And we get 13. One last thing before you move on. If you move through it swiftly enough, you should have time to check your answer. So let's say we know he was 12 years old at the beginning then we can say that his age was 12 times the number of days, which is 20, plus his age being 13 times 30, and check what you get. 12 times 20 is 240 plus 390, that's 630. It checks out and you can move on to the next problem. Okay, continuing on with the 2010 AMC 10A problem nine, which was also the 12A problem six. A palindrome such as 83438 is a number that remains the same when its digits are reversed. In other words, backwards. So if I go this way, 83438, same. Another example for words is race car. Like you, sh you should know it applies to words as well. The numbers X and X plus 32 are three digit and four digit palindromes respectively. 
We don't even need to read the question yet. Just think about that. We can probably figure out what X is. That's kind of probably the goal at some point in the problem. So if you're going from three digits to four digits by adding 32, the three digit number must be in the 900s. So it must go nine blank nine. Furthermore, it must be within 32 of going over 1,000. The small, again, 969, and you've got 979, 89, and 99. Now, just try adding 32 to the first one. You should know this is 31 away from 1,000. So then you add one more to that to get 1,001. Hey, that's a four-digit palindrome. This must be X. What is the sum of the digits of X? 18 and 6 is 24. On to the next one. All right, and this is the AMC 10A from 2010, problem number 10, the last problem of this set. I do usually the first 15 problems in sets of five. Marvin had a birthday on Tuesday, May 27th in the leap year 2008. In what year will his birthday next fall on a Saturday? So we start by saying Tuesday, it's, we don't have to write May 27th, but you can, and just use the last two digits, 08. Okay, so you need to have some background knowledge. If you don't have it, you're gonna to have to develop it on the test. The background knowledge is this. Every year that you go forward, it's going to advance one day from the previous year. And if you go forward four years, it's going to advance five days because there's a leap year somewhere in every four year period. So uh, let's establish why those things are true. There's 365 days a year. Uh, you know that 350 is a multiple of seven, seven times 50. You know 14 is a multiple of seven, therefore 364 is a multiple of seven. So if you go forward 364 days from any day, you're right back at the same day again because you went forward seven days or multiples of seven days. So 365 is one more day than there is a multiple of seven. So if you go forward 365, you will advance forward one day in the following year except for leap years where you advance two days because they have 366 days. So what we're gonna do is capitalize on the five years or a five day advance for four years. Uh, Tuesday is the third day of the week, Sunday being the first. So in 2012, you will add five to this and you'll be at the eighth day, which doesn't exist. So it's one more past the seventh. Um, it's going to be Sunday. So Sunday is going to be uh, in May 27th in 2012. And we do this again. In 16, you're gonna go forward five days. This is the first day, one plus five is six. We need the sixth day of the week. That's a Friday. We're looking for a Saturday. Well, that's one year away. So 17, Saturday, answer 2017.